We're going. We're going. We should We're have going. like some like some music like. Da, 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 da. We should. But That's like, a great idea. Catchier. As we're like waiting to get on, I think that's like brilliant. I saw yeah. Jen. Oh gosh. I thought I met her. I did. Hey Jen, Jen's here now. Hey, Yay! My girl. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. Lunch with the Thrag Bunch. Hey everyone, I am Tyler Melton, Chief of Staff for Thompson Holdings LLC. And uh, whatever Eric needs me. To be that day. Sometimes I'm a painter, sometimes I'm a dog sitter. So here we are. Welcome back to another episode. <laughs> Today we also have with us Logan Baker. Hello, everybody. What do you do here, Logan? Who are you? I am uh, a comedian, a singer, um, and most importantly, residential specialist. Yeah, you are, girl. What up, Jen? There's my <laughs> girl. <laughs> no look at you. Never. You look so tan. <laughs> I know, she's always this is what tan. yard work looks like. <laughs> oh. I love that. Is Chad now making you do lawn work? Chad is at the beach um, working on training. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer has to do all her <laughs> yard work now, so this is what it is. Right savagery well we are so happy to have you here thank Thanks. you for joining us today the always fabulous i cannot wait to dive into it so we have a few pieces of housekeeping because for those of you listening to the podcast you know that's always how it works however i want to point out that logan is currently sitting at eric's desk which was cleaned prior to the start of the show so for anyone who is used to watching the franticness of the show and Eric cleaning his desk, I'm so sorry you missed that this week because we took care of it far before we hit go live. <laughs> so there's that. Anyway, this weekend's the big, the big weekend. The big weekend is here, uh, maybe in the park. It's happening this weekend. And I'm so excited. So you guys haven't gotten your free tickets. You can go to our Facebook page. You can search for Threg's Movie in the Park and get your tickets. We're showing, what movie are we showing, Lo? Soul, which I recommended. It's, um, I don't want to say how many times I've seen it uh, thus far, but it's such a great movie and it has a cat. And what more do you need? <laughs> I'm such a cat person. I am just so not. But anyway, this movie is not based around an actual cat. It is about music, and we love music in this office. And I know um, my sweet friend Jennifer does as well. So that's this weekend. The tickets are free. Come out and hang out with us. I don't know why I'm playing with a sharpie. I'm going to mark my face blue, so I'm going to put that down. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to show Disney Soul. We'll also have um, Small Batch Mobile Bar with popcorn and drinks. We're going to have three-in-one cookies and coffee, giving out sweets. We have swag bags, and all of this is brought to some of our amazing partners. Um, guaranteed Rate, Lloyd Daw is our movie screen sponsor. We've got our concession sponsor, Ryan Graham, with Coastal Property Inspections. And then the swag bags are sponsored by our friends at ENC Homeworks. So shout out to those people. Y'all get to hear all about the cool things that Jennifer and Chad get to do with us too today. Um, but yeah, we're really excited. So if y'all got your tickets, get your tickets so you can come hang out. So that's all for me. It's going to be fun. What's going on um, sales world you know the market is still great it's still hot uh we actually closed on two properties that was a huge win for our team and for the sellers uh uh 121 random wind drive went 21,000 over asking and oh, then Lord. also yes and then uh was it, did they have 11 offers or was it Derby Park that had 113 Derby, Derby Park? 11 offers. Yes. 11. And then they also uh, went $20,000 over asking. So two great areas, River Bend, Derby Park, my favorite. So let me know if you know anybody that uh, wants to sell their home. We have 10 families still looking to buy. 
Yeah, we this it was wild. Like it was, a, it was a lot. It was a lot. And then Jennifer gives me a great segue to talk about you because you ended up helping the Bears with some insurance quotes for their new house because they bonds all the same time and that's just hectic as all can be. So we're gonna yep. dive into you, but the last thing we have coming up this weekend because y'all know that we do nothing on a small scale. Of course, we have our big movie in the park of it. We also have two gorgeous historic downtown New Bern houses open this weekend. So come pop by and see us. We're going to be at 616 New Street on Saturday mm-hmm. from 12 to 2. And we're going to be at 209 Chain Street, which I'm hopeful that if I play my cards right, maybe Eric will buy for us and we're turn it into our, like we can all live in together. We've like all like claimed our rooms whenever we yeah. preview the so house. The third like, floor, that is like, that's the C-suite, okay? That is mine. I'm gonna I'm put like a gate there with like a security guard to stand and guard it. That's mine. There's a bar <laughs> there and everything. Like I'm set, I'm gonna go anywhere. I'll just do like yeah. Jennifer and get my wine delivered to the office. Make it happen. <laughs> so we'll be at those houses this weekend. You guys can come and hang out with us, come and play. Y'all can get us all weekend long. And then on Sunday, I plan on sleeping until 8 p.m. and then waking up, eating a meal, and going back to bed because I'm going to be exhausted. <laughs> Sounds like a great <laughs> Sunday. Ah, uh, so that's all the housekeeping for me. It's enough, enough of thread. I want to talk about our sweet friend over at Chad Tech Agency. This gal is the queen of insurance. Like, if there was such a title. That's what should be on your business cards. Like whatever uh, crap yes. Chad has yes. on there doesn't work anymore. I'll give a Chad on there. that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him Tyler said. Like make oh. it happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm really excited. I have personally worked with you and you are switching all of my stuff over right now because I've been overpaying. And I'm I'm and almost under mad insured. At you forgot that part. Uh, what part? <laughs> and underinsured. Oh yeah. Yeah. So isn't that terrifying? Like I have a child riding in my car and I don't have insurance to cover anybody. Anyway, I'm like sick to my stomach. I'm okay. Um, so Jennifer just like, it was the most simple process and I, and we're going to dive into like your whole journey in this, but I like sent you my driver's license and just, it just, she just handed it back to me. Like that was literally it. I used to be a recruiter, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. So anyway, we are so but excited to have you. Just to make it easy for you. Well, we are so happy to have you. Thank you for joining us this week. Eric sends his hugs and kisses and all of his love. Um, but currently he's working at a rental. <laughs> he's doing what? He's working at a rental. Out. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's important Dang, too. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. So Tell us, how did this journey in becoming the queen of insurance begin for you? Um, well, I was an executive recruiter for 15 years, and then the economy tanked in 2009. And I originally moved to Newburn for Gray. I think everybody knows that, 20 plus years ago. And I remember saying to him at one point, what would I do in this town if something happened to my job? And he's like, oh, nothing's going to happen to your job. You have a great job. You've got the baby boomers. The economy's good. You're set to buy the company. And so I was like, yeah, you're probably right, you know. But who would have projected, you know, 2009 and the recession and the downfall and the crash of, you know, mortgages and housing and all that kind of stuff. So I did, as a recruiter, I primarily recruited to, you know, CEOs, plant managers, CFOs for building products in the automotive industry which were two of the most heavily affected industries. Right. Um, so 70% of our market went out of business. Um, and to this day, the majority of them have not returned. Um, and so here I find myself at almost 40 years old, unemployed in New Bern. <laughs> um, so initially we thought the economy was gonna bank, bounce back a little bit faster. So um, I was a little excited because I was like, I'm out of my non-compete for the first time in 15 years. Woo-hoo, I could go do this for myself and I don't have to give somebody else 60% of it. Um, so I went to bartending and waiting tables and thought that I would save money for software for a year or so. But within a few years, the economy really hadn't bounced back. You know, it was more of like a gradual <laughs> choo-choo train back. Um, <laughs> So at that point, I'm like, okay, well, 
if I continue to bartend and wait tables, I'm probably not going to stay married. So we're going to have to do a change on this. You know? um, and so Chad honestly had tried to get me to come to work for him for quite a while. But, you know, the Lord always has a way of humbling you. <laughs> and so when he had pursued before, I'm like, I am not doing that. I don't know that. Um, so eventually, a year and a half, two years later, I walked in with, you know, my head down and my resume and said, <laughs> you're right <laughs> no, do you still have a position of and he had never directly done it he'd done it through my husband he'd done it through my friends he had never directly said hey I want you to come to work for me but he'd been attacking everyone around me and um so I walked in and gave him my resume and talked to him for a second and he literally said oh my god I just hired somebody like last week and I was like, okay, well, you know, if something comes up, just let me know. I'm actively looking. You know, I'm still working, but I'd like to find something, you know, to get back into more career position. And um, I continued to go around town and drop off a couple of resumes. And within like two hours, he had called me. And he said, can you meet Carla and I um, at Target for coffee tomorrow morning? And I was like, sure. So long story made short, I met him and Carla and we quickly just kind of figured out a game plan to make it happen. And um, I came to work for him and did not know anything about insurance. As a matter of fact, I hated insurance because like I'm, especially when you think about like health, I am a healthy person, right? So why should I have to pay $800 a month when I only go to the doctor once a year? Like the concept right. is kind of annoying. Um, so, and then I'm like, I'm a safe driver. Okay. So why do I got to pay for everybody else that wrecks, you know? Um, and so like, I just literally hated it, but you know what, like I said, the Lord has a way of humbling you and I needed a job and I enjoy working with people. Um, so that part was the easy part, um, learning the insurance, not so much, but, um, I think once you get your foundation and then you realize that 90% of people don't have a clue what they have, they don't have a clue what they have. They call somebody who is basically what makes us different is we are not an agency that just picks up the phone and you'll say, oh, well, I have 30, 60, 25 on my auto coverage now. That's not what I do. Like, I'm literally like, I'm going to put together a package to give you what I believe that you need. We'll talk about it. And if you want to back off of that, I'm fine with it. But then at least you're educated and you know. Um, and so the average insurance company just answers the phone like literally retail. It's like walking into American Eagle or the convenience store, you know? Oh, um, and so because I enjoy people and I enjoy learning new things, just, you know, through the years, that's kind of grown. Um, it was just Chad and I for a long time. We were just talking about that because we've got somebody out sick this week, somebody on vacation this week, somebody in licensing training this week. And Chad's like, well, do you think we should, you know, with all this COVID stuff going on, you think we should just like put a sign on the door? I'm like, no, <laughs> I've run this office by myself. No, yes. we have four people here still. No. Um, but anyway, just like through the years, we, um, we have really started to fine tune. I mean, it's a process. We're still in the process of building the bones um, because we're growing and that's a great thing, but you have to have the right people in the right place, with the right knowledge, and you have to really fine tune. I'm all about working smarter, not harder, you know, and, and more efficiently. I can't stand inefficiencies. Like I want the, the most efficient route, you know? And so that's, that's where we're at a little bit of fine tuning right now. Um, we just, like I said, kind of through the years, putting together the right packages for the right people and helping people understand what they really truly have and what they really truly need and why they need it and helping them be prepared for situations when they occur um, giving them knowledge I mean sometimes not everybody wants the same thing from an insurance company there are people who don't mind being a little bit self-insured to save an additional five thousand dollars a year you know um, but it's the education piece of it that also makes it fun that's also what makes it rewarding um, and then from there, really, if you treat people the way you want to be treated and you do the right thing, then they're going to send you people. And so that's essentially how we built our business. We do very little. Most of the marketing that Chad does is all local, like small town kind of. Um, he's really big about giving back to the community. Um, and so that I say that a lot, like, you know, people that have Geico, I'm like, well, when's the last time Geico donated to your kids softball league? You know, doesn't happen. Facts. Um, or, yeah. you know, you can call my office and talk to the same seven or eight people 
all the time. You can walk in my front door and see us face to face or come sit down with us and we'll help you. You know, we do everything from set up their drive safe and safe program for them to helping them get registered online to helping them file claims or, you know, whatever we're, we're there. And that's how we differentiate, you know, and I think that's what has taken us to the success rate that we have. We're actually in the top half percent of all state farm offices nationwide right now. Wow. There's like 19,000 offices. So that's pretty cool. Um, we're going for, you know, number one. We're not quite there yet, but we're still in the top half percent of all 19,000 offices, which is awesome. For those um, of you like listening, that like, holy crap. That is a little new Yeah, <laughs> you are in New Bern, North Carolina. Like, we are a, we think of ourselves, I think, as a small town. Wouldn't you agree, Lo? Like, it's a small town and yep. you're out here like slaying dragons it's all yeah. about like it's about relationships because we can write anywhere in North Carolina right you know and I always tell people if you can write insurance on the coast you can write it anywhere the people in, in the central part of the state cannot come to the coast they will call me even other state farm agents will call us and say we have a client buying a second house at the beach I don't know how to help them so it's just, you know, the 18 coastal counties of North Carolina are tricky and you need to know what all of your options are and what's the best option for each client um, and how to package that together. And State Farm has done a good job. I'll throw this out there. Um, we are so strong on new construction. You know, you've seen the numbers. We are so strong on new construction. It is unbelievable. I had um, I have a friend who's a Farm Bureau agent, and he texted me one day this week and said, hey, can State Farm include wind and hail in new construction in Craven County? And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> and then I sent him back the name of the person that I knew he was comparing me against with a question mark. And he said, back in capital letters, yes. And I said, I'll smoke you. And I put a little fire <laughs> symbol up. <laughs> I, <love laughs> so I was like, you can't catch me. <laughs> uh, yeah. You better put um, on sneaks, boy. We're going for a run. <laughs> that's a lot of that's attributed to the changes that have been made in new construction after 2009 and some of the building codes, you know, for our area. Um, and State Farm, so they believe in giving credit for that because that is less of a risk. When they say they've taken all these extra precautions with these homes, it makes it less of a risk. So they are basically rewarding you for that. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. The other big piece I think that we really specialize in is liability piece, which is, you know, what you and I talked about before. Yeah. It's just I that no idea. I was a lot of people mortified. don't understand how much they're at risk. Yeah. Um, you know, more specifically when it comes to auto insurance, they just call Geico or Progressive and they're trying to get the cheapest thing available. Um <laughs> what's the cheapest? You know. <laughs> Look, Taylor's still a little guilty right now. I like that. Yeah, my face is getting a little warm. Like she's still a little well called out. <laughs> <laughs> so many people will um they'll just, you know, like I said, they'll call Geico Progressive and they just want the cheapest quote available. You know, what's the best you can do for me? And so nine times out of ten, that company is putting them at what we call state minimums, which is the minimum amount of insurance you have to have to drive a vehicle to get a license plate. And it's only $30,000 maximum payout in medical expenses for any one individual if you were to cause the accident and a $60,000 per accident maximum, no matter how many people are in the vehicle, they'll only pay out $60,000. And then your property damage is $25,000. How many cars out there are there today worth more than $25,000? A gazillion. Um, so it's just, it, and you also, when you have state minimums, you do not get underinsured motorists you only get uninsured motorists which means your policy is only going to cover you if the other person does not have any insurance if that other person also has state minimums and you just got your new tahoe to the tune of 70 grand and they only have twenty five thousand, guess who's going to be on the hook for the remainder of the you know if the, if the vehicle's towed out it's going to be you you're going to be hey. yes you you're going to be paying off a loan on a car that you do not own. Right. <laughs> that is scary. Is scary. Too. I can see it. Because <laughs> now I'm thinking, like, I, I, and I, she doesn't know what she has. I, no, I told them, I was like, just put me on whatever. Just put, <laughs> and so I'm going to give you a phone call after this. 
Yes, no, we will hook you up. We will oh, definitely. Gosh. Yeah, I think that's like the biggest <laughs> eye opener is even like Logan and I are in the business of real estate. Like we deal with this and yet I was so undereducated because I had just like jumped from the cheaper like online people uh-huh. and like I feel almost like nasty saying that like I feel like I just said dirty word but we don't know because it, and right. that's like one of the greatest reasons why we love you and, and and I know that Eric would back me up a thousand and ten percent is because you guys take the education of your consumers and your clients just as seriously as we do and I had I no know. idea one I was overpaying on my house insurance I have a like near brand new house and I was like I told my husband I said our mortgage payment will shrink like whoa and I need to send yeah. you the next page and I know that and sorry I need to do that yeah. but like and even yeah, quoting, think- well, like <laughs> quoting out our auto stuff and the umbrella policy I didn't know I didn't understand and I just was like well I just want that whatever's cheapest and yet if god forbid something was to happen to me to my kid to someone else to their kid I I would have yeah. had to sell my kidney at least yeah if not both of them yeah And that's the biggest thing is people just don't know. So, you know, I always tell people like, I'm going to present the information, what you choose. And I understand that not everybody, you know, it's just like deductibles on homeowners insurance. I tell people like for me, I'm never going to file a claim for $1,800. Sorry. It's just not going to happen. You know, so I might as well go with a $2,500 deductible. Right. Right. But for my single mom who it's going to be really hard to come up with $2,500, it might be easier for her to pay an extra $10 a month so she can have that $1,500 deductible versus the $2,500 than it would be to come up with $2,500, you know? And so not everybody needs the same thing from an insurance company. So assessing someone's needs and kind of where they're at is a really important piece because, you know, with life insurance, for example, um, if I put you in a policy that you really can't afford that we haven't planned your budget around, then it's not going to do any good because, yeah, I'm going to sell it to you now at, you know, 25. But if you come back to me, you know, in two years and say, I can't afford it anymore, then what we what have we done? Like, my goal is to keep you so that you're always insured from a life insurance standpoint. So I want to put you in a policy that you can afford and you can always add to it later. You know, so it's it's really just about assessing the individual's needs and what they have at the time. But the liability part is huge. And I do recommend umbrella policies a lot. You know, if you're somebody who is, especially real estate agents, um, if you're a real estate agent, if you own your home, if you have land, if you have assets, I mean, I think everybody should have one because they're not that expensive. You can do a million dollars. One person is 180 or two people is 144 a year. I mean, that's literally like $9 a month or $12 a month. You're paying to have an a million dollar umbrella policy that's also going to come with, you know, State Farm will pay your attorney fees in a litigation situation. We literally that. have that. That's awesome. we have three claims going on right now on umbrella policies that are not related to a car accident and they're not related to something that's happened on the individual's properties. Wow. These are where, because that umbrella policy extends over any property that you own, as well as your vehicles and anything that happens to you in those vehicles, but it also extends to you as a person. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if Luke has a few too many beers at the golf course and talks nasty to the wrong person. <laughs> and then <laughs> you forget I was married to Grace Wendell. This could have happened. It right. really could have happened. I'm pretty sure they're the same person. <laughs> it, car guys, I'm telling you. Right. They're mouthy. They're loud. They're confident. Oh my they're mouthy. <laughs> yes. That's what they are. Man. But, what. but you wouldn't have them any other way. Let's no. be honest. But but suppose, you know, he gets into a confrontation with the wrong person. And then next thing you know, you get served papers that you're being sued for slander and harassment. Right. Guess what's going to protect you? That umbrella policy you just started. And it's going to come with attorney fees paid for by State Farm instead of paid for by Taylor Mountain. You know what I mean? Like, so there's... There's just, you never know. And unfortunately, we live in such a litigious society that it could happen so quickly. And you know, and you guys deal with a lot of people that are retiring. Yeah. They've worked their whole lives to have this paid for house or to have money in the bank or assets or whatever. So I don't ever want that to be attacked because I didn't open my mouth or educate someone, you know? So I, I believe in giving you the information. And then if you want to make the decision, then that's up to you, you know? 
but we're always going to, and that's like flood insurance. People will say, oh, well, I'm not in a flood zone. There is no such thing as not being in a flood zone. I learned <laughs> you are, that in a CE class. I learned you are that. Either, I learned that. You're either in a preferred zone, a hazardous zone, or a more hazardous zone, or even a yeah. velocity zone, which includes weight action. There is no such thing as not being in a flood zone. If it rains where you live, you can flood. Like, it's a flood zone. If it puddles in your yes. yard, it is flooding. I, I literally mentioned. had a client before Florence who sent me pictures. She lives in a, a cul-de-sac and she sent me pictures of her kids kayaking in the road. This was before Florence ever happened. It was just like a summer thunderstorm that year in 2018. Her kids were literally kayaking in the cul-de-sac. And she says, I think we need flood insurance. And I said, I know you do. <laughs> um, and so we wrote the policy and it started like, I think four days before Florence. Oh yeah. So, yeah. It's crazy. That's wild. Well, I cannot appreciate our partnership with you enough. Um, the community involvement that you guys do, that you are doing with us. In oh, okay. We'll be able to find us all together um, because that's kind of our favorite place to be. Um, <laughs> And I just, I really greatly appreciate the partnership. I don't oh, know yeah. I have ever been educated on insurance at the level that you always like slow down and take the time to do. And I just greatly appreciate that. We appreciate you. We definitely appreciate the partnership. That's what it's all about. Life is about relationships. That's what I tell my girls all the time. Life is about mm -hmm. relationships, period, yeah. end of sentence. If you keep that in perspective, whether it's in your personal life or doing business, you'll, you'll be successful. That is very good. Logan, I'm going to let you ask the last question on the sheet. She what, what is your big why behind what you do and how can we best support you? My big why behind what I do, why I do what I do is helping people. Um, whether that is you know, growing the agency. I mean, Courtney, my assistant, author, I don't know. she's getting ready to do something really exciting. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. I can't divulge any other information, but she's getting ready to do something really, really exciting that she never thought she would be able to do. And it's as a result of what Chad and I have built together um, and how we've, you know, grown that. Um, we do something called Wellness Wednesday for the team here. So like an hour after we close on Wednesday, we bring in, we partner with different people. Um, we've done, you know, something called learning to love yourself, mind, body, and spirit, a session for four or five weeks. We've done, we just recently finished up a nutrition class with a personal trainer from, um, oh. um, we've done, what else have we done? Um, all kinds of different stuff. We're getting ready to do a finance class. And then after that, we're going to do dance class because we want to mix it up with something fun. Logan and I would like an invitation to the finance class. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, Chad would love that because this is funny, y'all. So I'm talking to him and I was like, okay, I pull the girls and see what everybody wants. Mine is time management. We're going to try to put that somewhere near Christmas because that's I got you. Too. So, I got you. Um, I said, okay, well, the team really wants finance. So I need your help with like, for all this other stuff, I've kind of known where to go. And I'd come to him and say, okay, well, we have this customer or I have this partnership and here's the people I'm thinking about for this. What are your thoughts? You know? So with this one, I come to him and I was like, I really don't have any idea. I mean, we have a couple of financial partnerships and we have some customers and that kind of thing. I was like, but I know your thoughts. Like, I know you're going to be really picky. And he goes, oh no, I'm teaching that. I'm teaching that. <laughs> and I was like, okay okay are you gonna be ready to do that and he's like I need a couple of weeks but yes um he said Chad will be your financial advisor instructor yeah. <laughs> well, wellness uh, Wednesdays you guys are welcome to come to that, that session yes. starts um the Wednesday after Labor Day from okay. five to six at my office you are more than welcome to come he would be thrilled um but, you know, we do stuff like that to help build and grow our team and yeah. to grow them as an individual, not just as a professional. I mean, we're investing in them professionally through our team, team meetings and training and that kind of stuff, but we're investing in them personally and it helps grow them as an individual. And, you know, 
Courtney was just saying that that's like one of the things that makes her want to work harder for us because she knows and feels appreciated. And we yeah. do a lot of the extras, yeah. you know, I always say we're extra, so we might as well get the extras. Um, <laughs> that, that's the way I sell it to Chad anyway, you know, <laughs> and I break out the checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so it's not just the people. I mean, obviously the people that are my customers, I adore. Like literally I had a couple in here yesterday and we weren't the cheapest. And, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm not always going to be the cheapest, but I hope to be is competitive and bring to you a quality product with a high level of customer service. And that's what we do. And he said to me, he said, Jennifer, it's not always about price. Sometimes it's about the, when you're dealing with insurance, insurance is a serious business. I want somebody who is confident and knowledgeable. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, you found them, you know, you're at the right place, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's not just about my why is not just about the customer. It is. That's a huge part of it. But there's the other half of that. And that's the employees. We just hired. She literally just walked through as you guys, as I was talking, we just hired someone else. And the way Chad and I look at that is that's one more family we can help. You know, that's one more individual that we can bring on board with our team who's going to become a part of a family. We always say in our team meetings, we're, we're family. All families are dysfunctional. We're no different. <laughs> we're no different. You know, we have to work through issues. I mean, there's been times when I've called them all back in the conference table and said, sit down, <laughs> sit it out. <laughs> you know, like, especially when I first got back, you know, when I had been working from home. So, um, but I guess I would say people is my why. People and helping people is definitely my why. That's my favorite thing to do. Well, we love that and we love you. Thank you for spending some time with us. Um, yeah, today. absolutely. It's my pleasure. Educate our friends over here at the yeah. Thread Bunch office. <laughs> All right, love you, baby. Call on me. Yeah, sure. I'm, 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 I'm about to send you everything. <laughs> yeah. Driver's license. I was <laughs> yep just a driver's that's literally all i said here was a driver's license it's okay lucas um might have found that thing we were looking for and it should be delivered shortly so i will Ooh, be posted look at on that. that um but that is all we have for this week's episode of lunch with the thread bunch i am your host tyler and i will see you guys next week thanks everyone thanks bye, bye. bye.